Alrighty, time for another four on four. Unfortunately, they used the bad art version. I'm going to be first picking a thought seize over a preordain here. Ely is passing to me, and I am passing to D Stern. So I guess that is a thought seize here. Um, and this is a snuff out. I really do like snuff out, and I think I'm supposed to just go thought seize into snuff out here. Blood Crypt is also actually a card that's pretty high priority when you're in black, because I think black red is the most common and best pairing for black. Blue, black, and black, red are, are the two best pairings for black. It doesn't combine with green and white all that well. But that being said, I think I still will just take the snuff out because it's a free way to kill creatures. And it can be really effective at doing so. And then here, mm, there's Grim Monolith. But Grim Monolith is, I think, pretty medium. I don't really want to just slam Pyrokinesis here. Noise Marine, I think, is good, but I, I, I'd rather, I think I'd rather just take Mishra's Bobble. It's kind of just like deferring the pick. Obviously, if I get Luris, that's when we're really cooking. That's kind of what I'm hoping to for secretly. But even without Luris, I think Bobble does a lot of cool little things. And this pack was just, I don't know, not very impressive. Oh, interesting. So here, there. I actually might slam Basalt Monolith, and, and hear, hear me out, hear me out. Uh, there's a Zerda in this pack that might come back around, and there's a Forensic Gadgeteer from a previous pack which might come back. Basalt Monolith now has goes infinite with Zerda, Gadgeteer, and Kinnon. Taking one early, I think, could be pretty good. There's also Corpse Dance, but I really like the Basalt decks, so I'm going to take that. <laughs> now there's a Doomsday. I just did that uh, last draft, but... There's also Liliana of the Veil, vale. and it's not its not that Liliana is bad. It doesn't go that well with the Basalt Monolith. It's a double black spell. I kind of want to just take Zeotor's Proven Ground anyway. I think if I end up... There's a lot of different color combinations, mostly red-black, <laughs> where that would be useful. And then see if that Doomsday comes back around, maybe. And then here... Well, I got an Infernal Grasp. That was a fast pack. I didn't realize these were set quite so quickly. Uh, Infernal Grasp is fine. I guess that's probably not what I would have taken. But here, I guess I'll take Imperial Seal now. Maybe if I'm combo, that'll be good. I think I'll take that over Sword of the Meek. And now there's an unmarked grave. Uh, yeah, I guess that's probably better than like Bring to Light or Subtlety. It looks like black is fairly open, so I could have had a corpse dance over a basalt monolith, but I think, and maybe a Liliana, maybe that would, that will certainly would have looks better from where I am right now, though it is possible that I get the Gadgeteer back. Deathrite Shaman Ulamog? No, I think I like Deathrite. Deathrite, I think, is a pretty good card. I don't really like Coalition Relic. The only time I'd be happy with Coalition Relic is if I end up with Misha's Workshop, basically. But I think death right here is okay. There's also faithless looting. That would obviously be legit. But all I know is that I'm playing black right now. So I guess I'll lean into that for the moment. And then I guess I'll take Graveyard Trespasser over Dress Down and Wandering Emperor. Don't see a reason not to. Haven't seen any of the good reanimate cards. Like any good animates or good creatures so far. I have like Unmarked Grave is a kind of medium one. Um... Hmm, this pack is a kind of unexciting wheel. What am I most likely to play here? Really not that likely to play any of these things, I guess. I'll take I'll take Leyline Binding. I have a Triland, I don't know. Oh, Corpse Dance came back? <laughs> okay, I guess I'll just take it. Wow, wait, Gadgeteer and Zerda neither came back. <laughs> All right, well, I guess I'll hate Ageddon or... Yeah, Utopia Sprawl is a little better. I don't really believe in reanimating Gruff Triplets. And then, I don't think this is a Tendrils deck. Could it be a Tarmogoyf deck? I guess it technically could be. Oh, Land Grant to get Zeotor's Proven Ground is not nothing. All right, pack two. What do we got? Um, I guess a Pest Infestation. So... All I missed out on at the end was a Lily for a Zeotor's Proven Ground. I don't mind that too much. The Basalt Monolith pick didn't really derail here. I'll take Pest Infestation. At this point, I, I could count on playing Land Grant for Proven Ground and maybe a Forest. And then Pest Infestation is the Splash. I like that more than Chrome Mox, I think. Oh, well, that segues nicely into Undermount Adventurer here. Which I think is a lot better than taking Time Twister or Sneak Attack. And... 
Great, I'm black green, one of the worst color combinations. Well, we'll see, we'll see. Not not locked into that, but at this point, Tarmogoyf and Utopia Sprawl both look a little bit more playable. I, I kind of have the cards for this. We'll, we'll see if it pans out. And then here, hmm, I guess I could just take Delighted Halfling because I think that's where we're going. Kind of unfortunate, but I don't think I'm going to take Blightsteel. I could take Green Suns, but I think Green Suns wheels a little more. I do like it with Undermountain. I think we're just, we're in Mana Dork territory. Actually, I'm pretty happy with the Proven Ground picks so far. And the Corpse Tenth doesn't even look good. I'm green, black, mid, but I'll try to make the best of it. And then here, we've got Wasteland, which is nice. Fire Covenant is a really nice splash. Don't think I want Seder Wayfinder, World Spine Worm, Spirit Guide, Scavenging Ooze. A Braid is a lot worse than Fire Covenant. I think I might just take Fire Covenant, though actually, no, Wasteland makes Deathrite Shaman so much better, and Wasteland's also just a very strong card, so I'll just take that. And then here, there's an Underground Sea that doesn't do much for me right now. There's Yava Maya, which is fine. <laughs> I guess it makes anything into Utopia Sprawl. There's also Terra Sunder, which is a pretty good removal spell. I guess I'll just take Terra Sunder. And, wow, there's Flash to go with the World Spine Worm. There's Thopter Foundry, whoever took that sword. I'm probably just going to take Wooded Foothills here. I do I do like Tomb Fortress. I think the card's pretty strong, but I think a fetch, especially with, in my Deathrite Shaman deck, I should just take that. And then now, there's both Asika's Chariot and Glissa. It's actually a really good Glissa deck. I feel like just casting a turn two Glissa off these things seems pretty great. Yeah, I think I'll take, take Glissa over Chariot. That is a close one, though. And then here, wow, it's a late Vampiric. There's also a Renin 6. Oh, I have Wasteland and Wooded Foothills. I also already have Imperial Seal. I think I'm just going to take Renin 6. I don't, I don't like Recurring Nightmare that much, and I have no big creatures. I feel like I'm really well poised. If I can find Strip Mine, this would be awesome. The Corpse Dance is not making it at this point. Oh, Hotley's great. I love Hotley. All right, I'll take that. If Green Suns came back, I'd be pretty happy. Wow, passing Arcane Denial and Spell Pierce, but I think this looks like an er the start to an Urborg deck. Seemed like at the very least I'd want to play it here. And then I'll take Pick Your Poison as a good sideboard card. I guess Green Suns isn't coming back. I think it was in this pack. Maybe it was the next one. But we've got, oh, I guess Unmarked Grave for Ren and Six. Go put a Strip Mine into the graveyard if, if I can get a Strip Mine. I have a Wasteland so far. All right, I mean... For being <laughs> Jund, uh, this deck actually looks like it's got decent card quality. Wayfinder, Ooze, and Spirit Guide came back. I think this is looking like a scavenging Ooze deck, though. Actually, Wayfinder with Renin 6 is kind of nice. Yeah, I, I, and Deathrite Shaman. All right, I'm, in, I'm into Seder Wayfinder. This looks pretty decent. I think Pick Your Poison is actually a main deckable card. And it's just so efficient. I still wouldn't mind a Luris. I guess I'll take a Tar Pit here. Green Suns didn't come back. Sad. But I think the one drops are too important. And I picked up Glissa and Renin 6, which are both nice legends to cast off that. And Hotly, why not? All right, I'll, I guess I'll hate an Echo of Eons. There's a chance if I get Hole Breacher or Leo or something that I play the late Echo of Eons. And then here, oh, there's the Hole Breacher. Okay. I mean... How do I have the discard Echo of Eons? Currently nothing, though I can mill it with Seder Wayfinder. What else would I take out of this pack? There's also Hex Drinker is great. Ignoble is probably the card I, I, I would take. I should probably still just take Ignoble Hierarch here. I mean, I have Unmarked Grave to find it. I just have such the good setup for Jund. Let's just take the Jund Mana Dork. I'm looking for Strip Mine more than really anything else. Here there's Bobbles, there's Overgrown Tomb, Cryptic Coat, an Emrakul, a bunch of blue cards. Wow. I'm just going to take Overgrown Tomb. This is obviously just such an Overgrown Tomb deck that now I've got excellent mana. Oh, wow. Raghavan and Verdant and Misty, I guess. Um, I could Raghavan. I have more than enough playables. I don't even know that Stern's going to be able to play this Raghavan. I'll just, I'll just take Verdant. Renin 6 just, is just incredible for my deck now. Deathrite Shaman's also popping off. And I'll keep the Red Splash to just Renin 6 maybe off of like... I don't even know if I need a Mountain, honestly. Yeah, I guess with Wooded Foothills I do. So Wooded, Mountain, Proving Ground, Verdant is plenty here. And then here, 
there's a palace jailer, which I guess I'm just passing. And I'm going to take from the catacombs. This is looking like a really nice catacombs deck. And then maybe I'll get Bayou or Blood Tithe or Karyatid or Elves of Deep Shadow, one of those back. But this gives the deck a little bit more oomph, which is pretty much all I was lacking. We're not getting strip mine though, I can tell you that. Uh, here there's a Trop, which would make a blue splash easy, but I have no blue cards. There's Nissa, there's Fallen Shinobi, Collective Brutality, but I'm not playing Reanimator. In fact, this Imperial Seal is also looking kind of mid. I might just take the Nissa. This looks like a decent Nissa deck. I have a lot of ramp to it. I think that's going to be fine. And. Give myself a little bit more powerful cards. Ooh, Dark Ritual for turn two Undermountain, turn three Nyssa, can fuel pest infestation, or from the Catacombs, sure. I'm just looking for ways to speed myself up a little, and Dark Ritual is a really, really good way to do that. All right, I mean, this looks like a pretty nice little fair Jun deck. I need another spell or two, and then, then I'm pretty much set. Oh, perfect. Moloch, exact card I want to splash here off of red. Good with Dark Ritual, too. I've got a little bit of red for red and six. Now for Moloch, passing a V-click, a standstill, a bunch of stuff. I think the Seder Wayfinder is looking pretty decent here. Between red and six and from the Catacombs, I feel good about it. Getting fuels a death right too, why not? Imperial Seal is a card I might want to cut though. And here, oh, this looks like a great Sylvan Library deck. The one thing this deck is missing is discard. I'm gonna, I am gonna struggle against some decks without discard. Not that Sylvan helps, I was just kind of saying, but uh, this looks like a good Sylvan deck over Courser, and I could take Kinnon for the infinite mana with Basalt Monolith, but I don't really have anything to do with that mana, so... Because right now we're at 15 lands plus land grant. So we're looking pretty good. I might just cut the Imperial Seal, because, I don't know, I just don't... My cards aren't good enough, though. I want to wait an additional turn to get them. Now there's Nature's Lore versus Nyssa. Hmm. Nyssa Ascended Animist is just okay. This looks like an okay Nature's Lore deck. Is it going to get Proven Ground or Bayou, or Overgrown Tomb, that is? Yeah, someone's getting a late Volcanic or Tundra. Both, actually. Pretty, pretty nice. And then now, I'm still one card over, or I just play 16 lands with Bobble, Utopia Sprawl, and a bunch of one-drops. That probably works, too. Wow, this pack has both Teferis and Cryptic Coat. I just don't want to splash another color, so I think I'm just going to take Gixis. No, maybe I just want Shield Edict, actually. Well, actually, I think I might take Gixis Command. I have a bunch of two-drop removal. I might sideboard it. I think it's a good sideboard. Well, it kind of worked out, because now I'll just take Bitter Triumph. That card's excellent. Passing Dust and a ton of good blue, but psh, what are you going to do? Oh, Bayou and Elves Deep Shadow came back? I'll just take Bayou, though, I think. I've got three one drops. I have four one drops. Yeah, that's a good number. Let's just take the Bayou. I guess I'll take Regisaur. There's I've, there's some matchups where I'd side it in. Though I guess like red green beats is kind of the matchup where you'd side it in. You wouldn't really want it even against white. And now, do I want Jetmere's Garden or Undercity Sewers? Um, probably Jetmere's Garden. I don't think I'm playing. It's more to do I want a Scryland, but. A mono black scry line doesn't seem that good. All right, let's get to deck building. All right, pretty easy build, to be honest. Uh, I'm not playing the Leyline Binding. I'm not playing Creeping Tar Pit. I could play Jetmere's Garden as a tapped red green land and a cycling land for a red and six. That seems fine. I want one mountain to for Wooded Foothills to get untapped land. And that leaves me with one, two, three, four, five, six red sources plus Sprawl Ignoble. And Delighted Halfling can help cast Ren and Six, though it can't cast. It can't tap for red for Moloch. Probably like two or three swamps. So if I have three swamps, I have three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then I think I want 15 lands total plus land grant. So that's three forests, is three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten green as well. Um. I could go one more green and one less black, probably. All right, and then this is also one card too many. Maybe I do sideboard the Pick Your Poison. I do have Pest Infestation. The other option is just a sideboard Graveyard Trespasser, but I kind of like Graveyard Trespasser in this sort of deck. I think I might just sideboard the Pick Your Poison and run it like this. I think 15 lands plus 
land grant. So effectively 16 lands with one drops and nature's lore. All right. I think this deck's nice. Just a nice classic Jun deck. I think that's pretty neat. Well, let's, let's see how this thing plays out. All right. As always, me and J-Row finished real quickly. So we're going to start battling. I'm going to keep this hand. This is a turn one, probably Bayou Utopia Sprawl into turn two death right plus bitter triumph i don't know i do need to draw a threat jaber's mulling and i have a good answer but this hand does of course a little bit of action light i'm probably going to be cycling that zeotor's proving ground oh nissa i like that all right let's utopia sprawl let's just name green here and the reason i wanted to play that over playing death right is death right doesn't tap for mana right now so i think it's better to do it this way um Let's cast Deathrite Shaman first, and then cast Sylvan and hope this resolves. Be nice if it did. If not, well, so be it. Mana Drain. Okay. Hopefully whatever Jaybro drains into is not is something I can kill with Bitter Triumph. Golos? Alright, that's... I mean, that's alright. Depends what it gets, I guess. Sheldock would be the, the most annoying. Oh, Misha's Workshop. Oh, interesting. Jaybro doesn't usually do this. Oh, that was nice. Wooded Foothills. Get Overgrown Tomb. Getting Drawing a fetch land there was so sick. Because now I get to slam Nissa. And I get to untap Overgrown Tomb. And then attack with Overgrown Tomb and pay three life to kill Golos. All right. And this puts Jaybro to 17 and is facing down Nissa plus stuff. So turn three Nissa is pretty good. Let's see. He's got a lot of mana now. Wasteland would be a really excellent card to draw here. Probably take out the Mishra's Workshop. I guess I could take out Rafine's Tower, but oh no. Oh, Emery, Milling, Mindstone, Urza's Bobble. He's got one card left. Oh, he doesn't appear to be playing anything. Oh, wait, I don't need to even tap the Swamp. Let's just cycle... Actually, let's cycle this, leaving a green floating. And hope to draw Wasteland or a way to kill Emery. Both of those would be pretty nice. Oh. Odawara Nissa? Okay, I guess so. So it goes. Play Ignoble Hierarch, play a land, and attack for four. And then... I'm just going to pass here. Jaybro, well, I played the Mana Crypt. I guess it, it did lose the flip. I guess it let him uh, use the, play the Emery on cheap. Oh, what did we draw here? Uh-oh, Jaybro. We just drew a Petal Ball off the top. Okay, I, I guess so. Um, and then I can't exile Bobble, which is why, I just waited on Death Right because I if he tried to replay Golos, I'd be able to get it. Draw a paddle ball off the top, huh? I was in pretty good shape. I'm still actually potentially fine because I get to eat the mana drain. I mean, Death Rite's a strong card. If I draw Pest Infestation here, that would be nice. All right, let's go Nissa. Cast Delighted Halfling. And then Nissa, my forest, I guess, and then pass the turn. If he loses a couple mana crypt flips here, then th that'll be easy. Yeah, now we're at five. So now Jaybro's down to five here, and I can mana crypt, or I can death right him down to three off my bitter triumph. So he's one mana crypt flip away from just dying. And it doesn't even necessarily have. Crazy good attacks. He's attacking me, I assume? I don't know. We'll find out. All right, I'm going to 10 here, and it's 8-7. I think I'm just going to block with Delighted Halfling. I don't want to kill the, the Battle Sphere. He'll just get to replay it. And then I get to Death Rite, and then I get to Nissa and attack with more. So <laughs> he just drew another 10-mana artifact? Oh, he drew Upheaval. All right, um, I guess I'll exile Bitter Triumph, sure. Well, uh, people's not the end of the world. Well, he didn't Emery the Bobble first. That's a pretty big error. 
Because you can't really replay Mana Crypt at three life. So what is he going to do? He's got Mishra's Workshop, but he can't even play Emery without replaying Mana Crypt. He could play Mere Battlesphere and take the 50-50. He could play Mishra's Workshop. He could play Mana Crypt. Oh, Mystic Forge was his last card. Okay. That doesn't necessarily cause a big issue. I mean, if he wants... To, yeah, he can't even tap it, because otherwise the death rate will, will, will kill him. Oh, Pest Infestation is really nice. Um, let's see. I think... Do I play Death Rite or Ignoble? Mm, I think I just play the Ignoble, because... I'm not going to use Death Rite next turn anyway. Uh, I discard Swamp or Mountain. I guess Swamp. I've got plenty of black sources. So now Jabro can play... Oh, you do Talisman. Wait. Oh, he's, that was his second card down. He had to have played that off the top. Yeah. So now he could go Island Emery. He can't quite play Battlesphere. Oh, he's going to go Seat of the Synod Emery, sure. And Mill... Oh, a Pyrite Spellbomb. That's unfortunate, because that can take out uh, the Death Rite Shaman here. So do I want a Pest Infestation now? I, I kind of don't think so. Oh, Snuff Out is really good draw, too. Okay, so now, now I feel like we're doing pretty well here. Let's go Utopia Sprawl. Add black, play death right, snuff out the emery going to six, and then attack with the ignoble for one. So that puts Jaybro dead to death right shaman next turn, and it doesn't even look like I'm going to have to use the pest infestation. He can play battle sphere that doesn't do anything. He mystic forges down to one, and. It's a talisman off the top. That's probably not going to do anything. Okay, well, he's going to go with the mana crypt, sure. Into six mana. Is this like a walking ballista? Huh. That, oh, it's a coveted jewel. Okay. Into lotus petal. It's going pretty hard. Does he have like... A, no, my teammate has Brain Freeze. Uh, Fuller, or Falcon Eye has uh, Brain Freeze Breach Time Walk. It's pretty nice. I'll have to show you that deck after this round. But, uh... I mean, jbro has got a really good Mishra's Workshop deck. I actually think Mishra's Workshop is a lot better now. I mean, not just because of, like, Coveted Jewel, but also uh, a lot of the Warhammer cards, like Sicarian Infiltrator or Chaos Defiler or the three black black... 5-3 flyer. There's just like a lot of good things. What do we got here? Oh, now there is a Ballista. Okay. Jaybro's going ham. I guess he's going to kill the Death Rite and the Ignoble. And then I'm going to Pest Infestation. And kill... I'm not even sure what, to be honest. Oh, well, probably Shadow Spear is one of the cards that is a lot more threatening. Moloch. Um, yeah, I guess I'll kill Shadow Spear. And he's he's on, I mean, Jabro's on a 50-50 regardless, but I think killing, he's got a ton of mana. I think killing Shadow Spear is going to give me my best shot here. Because now I have two attackers. Okay. Let's go Mana Crypt. And Jabril lost the flip. Oof. A lot closer than I thought it would be at certain points. He's got a pretty good deck here. All right. Well, definitely want Pick Your Poison in. And don't think I want, like, Gix's Command or any of these things. I like the removal still. Like Infernal Grasp, I still think that stuff's fine. Mm. Graveyard Trespasser. I guess that fights against Emery reasonably well. I could take out, like, a Seder Wayfinder or a Nature's Lore. Maybe Seder Wayfinder on the draw here. All right. Let's battle. J Bros on the play. I don't feel like this is a great matchup in general, but 
We'll see. I mean, he's got definitely some good, powerful stuff going on. Though I do have cards like Terra Sunder and Pest Infestation. No mana acceleration, though. That's kind of rough. This hand in particular. If I draw a one drop, oh man, and he led with Workshop, I don't think this is going to be an easy game. I was hoping to draw a one drop there, but look, I'll have a turn two Terra Sunder into a turn three Pest Infestation. That's hopefully something. This is Golos, or... I mean, if this is... Okay. If this is something that isn't Golos, I think that would be nice. Oh, this is Kappa Cannoneer. Yeah, we're dead. Kappa Cannoneer is so sick. All right. And so now it's a turn two Cannoneer, huh? Well... <laughs> a little late... Do I want to Wasteland here? It really doesn't seem like that does a lot for me. I think I'm going to just eat the Mind Stone here. Pass the turn. Maybe cut Jabra off a little bit on mana. No, no. We're, I'd say we're pretty done. Coveted Jewel. Okay, that's still probably not going to be able to beat this. I mean, look at this hand. Into... <laughs> what do we got here? All right, all right, you know what? This is this is enough. This is enough for me. I think uh, I'll let Jabra play his last spell. Presumably he's got one more. And then... Uh, all right, yeah. <laughs> we are beating that. All right, well. I mean, I guess I hope he doesn't draw Mishra's Workshop and that I have wasteland or at least just a one drop here let's let's see i'm on the play uh, all right i'll keep this do need to draw another land but this hand has four cards that cost one mana two of which are accelerants themselves though i guess the death rights up maybe a little inconsistent at that and i think pick your poison is good and i think thought seize is good so i'm going to keep this hand obviously if zeator's proven ground was just by you it would have worked out a little better but I think this hand is not something I'm supposed to mulligan. Jaybro did mold a six. Green source. If I have a green source, this hand becomes amazing. Okay, and he played a tap land. All right. Um, let's just go thought seize. Or oh, actually, I'm just gonna pick your poison. Each opponent sacrifices an artifact. I think that that's gonna delay anything he plays by a turn. Well enough. All right, pirate spell bombs fine. Land. Oh, wasteland is still land. So let's just go thought seize here. Tinker, huh? All right, I will take the tinker, leaving J Row with talisman and mystic forge. Play wasteland and pass. I'm just gonna play talisman, and I would like to draw a land still. Okay, that is definitely a land. So let's just go get Bayou. Cast Death Rite. Cast Delighted Halfling. And then now I've got Snuff Out. He can play Mystic Forge, but I can drop Undermount Adventure. And he can kill one of my Mana Dorks. Probably the Death Rite, because there's already two lands in the graveyard. So it's just a great Mana Dork. And now it's going to be Mystic Forge versus Undermount Adventure. Okay, Mana Crypt is good, but... Doesn't necessarily. I mean, it may lets him play a card off Mystic Forge if he, if he hits. I mean, Jabro's got Island in hand is the only card we know about. Yeah, there goes that Island. Research desk. Oh, is he gonna crack the research desk here? Well, I'm hoping Under Mountain into two removal spells is good enough here. But Mystic Forge can pop off. He's got a bunch of zeros. All right, he's gonna use the research desk. To just clear the top cards. Interesting. Interesting, interesting. Okay. And then use Mystic Forge to exile an island. And didn't play anything. All right. Well, I'll take that. Mm, Undermount Adventure. Go get a green source, I think. Forest, play the forest. Ooh, Tarmogoyf's looking pretty nice too. 
Let's see if our, oh, our mana crypt is just working over time. So Jabro draws a card that's not a zero mana artifact, plays his workshop, which I'm going to get to Wasteland. No, did we just draw a battle ball? Okay. Talisman's okay. Even Kappa Cannoneer would be okay. Oh, he hit the Mox Opal. And nothing else. If he if he misses on a good creature this turn, I think I'm very close to just winning. He can bring back... Oh, no. What is this? Oh, he's bringing back Research Desk. Oh, you're getting pinged? You have a Mox Opal in play. He really shouldn't be getting pinged here, but say la vie. All right. Cracking the Mishra's Research Desk. Exiling two more lands. <laughs> sure. And... He can't channel Odawara from there. All right, no no plays? No, he has a play. Hopefully it's not too great. Okay, that is good. Jaybro did did find a good one, but I don't think it's going to be good enough, which is actually part does show kind of how hard of a spot he was in. Because now I'm going to go Forge onto Undermount Adventure. And what am I going to do with my turn here? Um, I'm just going to snuff out the Cannoneer, I think. Paying Ward 4. I don't, I don't even really want to give him the opportunity to block. Hit J-Bro. Cast a Tarmogoyf. Oh, we're junding here. And then Wasteland the Mishra's Workshop. We are extremely junding. A uh, mere battle sphere, especially since he didn't lose that flip. A mere battle sphere would be the last thing I was really concerned about. Because, but even then, I actually don't think it does that much. Because trap takes Jabro to three. I bitter triumph the battle ball. I attack with Tarmogoyf and Undermount, chump chump, and then I Moloch the last one of the last two tokens. Yeah, sounds like we got everything covered. Look at this. Jund one lander. Pick your poison on Silver Bluff Ridge was a critical maneuver here. It kind of delayed us both a turn. Oh, we, or is this upheaval? Oh, Sicarian Infiltrator. Okay. And he squatted three times, so he makes four things. So he's got to worry about upheaval, but as long as I maintain the monarchy, then or the, the initiative, then, then upheaval is not that big of a problem. Okay, let's go trap. Nug you for five. Draw. Graveyard Trespasser is not bad. I guess they can't really block down any of my creatures, so let's attack with these two. Entice some, some chumping here. And then I'm going to go, let's see, Bayou plus Undermountain. Graveyard Trespasser on Kappa Cannoneer. And Jibro's at two with a mana crypt in play. And then Maw Lock, X equals one, and exile the original. So that if he does upheaval, it's not that big of a deal. All right, Team Jibro lost the flip and uh, oof, beat Jibro's really good academy deck with uh, just early pressure and a bunch of removal, the Jund way. All right, time for round two, battling against D Stern. And he's on a companion here. Lutri Zispel Chaser. Ooh, look at this hand. This hand's nice. I would like to hit an untapped land. Jetmere's Gardens is costing me a little here. But turn one Ignoble, turn two Glissa, turn three Undermountain, if all goes according to plan. Pretty nice. Let's see what we can do with that. And Dustin Mold is six here. Let's play Bobble and past the turn I'm going to upkeep bobble him just so I know know what's in his hand or at least a card of it and then hopefully draw an untapped land and then if glissa hits and I draw another card and lose another life I'll definitely get an untapped land then it's practically guaranteed <laughs> look worst comes to worst I'll play Jetmere's garden on too all right council's judgment good to know about Island and go. All right. Come on, Bobble. Deliver, deliver to me here. Did not exactly. That's fine. We'll just halfling and attack for one here. And so what's kind of tricky is I can play under Mountain Adventure and 
Oh, ancestral recall, very nice. And if I and if I do that, it's obviously much better than resolving Glissa. But Glissa is uncounterable, thanks to Halfling. So, hmm, I gotta figure out. My teammate played Dustin round one. Let's see what they've got. All right, so Dustin has Counterspell and Daze and Force of Negation. So I think I'm just gonna play Glissa here. Tap this for black, green, one. I just don't really want to get countered. No real reason to have that happen. And then I'm going to pass with mana up because I don't really care about attacking for one. And maybe I'll want to cast Bitter Triumph on something. Don't know how likely it is, but it is possible. Okay, end of turn. Sure, I'll crack Verdant. And... I guess I'll just get the Proving Ground. And then I'm going to attack here with Glissa and see what's up. Maybe maybe if I draw, he's going to try to Hole Breacher me. No. He's passing Glissa. All right. Use the ability. I'll get a Forest. And I guess now I just have to cast Undermountain. It just feels so bad. Uh, I'm going to wait a turn here. I don't know. It just doesn't feel... It feels like he just has Counterspell in hand. I, I don't really think playing into it really makes too much sense. If I, if I draw a Wasteland, I can Wasteland Spire Bluff Canal, and then I can resolve my Undermountain. I think that would be sick. Or I draw a different threat. <laughs> land Grant is not it. Oh, if I had left a Proven Ground in, I could get a Cycling Land off of it. All right, well, I guess I'll still play the Undermountain here. I mean, I drew a brick, so I feel like... Oh, memory lapse? Okay. Well, in that case, I'll attack you for two here. And then pass. All right, memory lapse. It's not so bad. That, that, I, can, that I can stomach. Oh, is this Othari? Oh, nice. That, this actually works out really well. Mm. Because I'll just kill that with Bitter Triumph. If Dustin has Daze here, then I'm going to get to play a Moloch as a 7-7. And then eat the Othari. So let's go ahead and land grant. Cast by revealing my hand. Just get a basic forest, land. And he's already used Daze, so I'm going to Moloch... X equals five. Yeah, let's just make it X equals six. Why not? And then fight Othari. Draw a card. <laughs> Dark ritual. That's eh, not super useful. Okay, and then ship the turn here. I mean, I don't like it. We're trading one for ones with someone who resolved ancestral, but he did have to discard. And he did path. Moloch was like a two for zero because I drew a card and killed something. So, okay. Friends of Gadget. Mox Ancestral. You go. Over here, I'll just grind it out with my Jund cards. I would really like to draw a Wasteland this turn if I can. We got like a little Teferi or something here. Oh, put putting Lutri, or Lutri into hand here. All right. What a bad draw. Sure. I hit with Moloch. I kind of expect to get chumped here. But we'll see. I get, it depends if Dustin has removal in hand. Still, nine's a lot of damage. Really would have been nice to draw a spell this turn. This would have been a good opportunity to resolve a from the catacombs. Though I guess, actually, there's no creatures in the graveyard right now. <laughs> oh, we're just taking it. Okay. Let's play Underground Adventure. And get a forest and play it, I guess. And pass the turn. I'm not feeling great about this spot, to be honest. But I kind of have to just play my cards. Really, the only thing I could have done differently is I could have played this one turn earlier into Memory Lapse. But I also, I don't know, given the information I had, I don't mind it. He did discarding Council's Judgment might end up costing... Dustin here. 
That card would be pretty good right now. Grim Monolith. Okay, that doesn't go infinite or anything. It's break even now. Though I guess if you copy Forensic Gadgeteer with like Phantasmal Image, it can go infinite. That's kind of funny. Are we cracking some clues to draw some cards? Can't quite get to Sheldock this turn. I have one more turn. Oh, Oust plus Lutri. Okay. Uh, and he ordered it, unsurprisingly, correctly. So now I'm going to put whichever one of these other creatures on top, and then Undermountain. Oh, Moloch is the other one. So Moloch's going on top, and this one's going on top. So I guess if I really want to, I can keep the monarchy by... Hmm. Oh, and there's Preordain. All right, well... What am I going to do here? I guess I could double chump and then and then scry. I think I'll probably do that. Because then I keep the initiative. And then I can choose Lost Well. I mean, I'm still pretty dead here, but... Lost well, at least I get to scry two. Graveyard Trespasser on the bottom, put Undermount Adventure on top. Draw Undermount Adventure, play it. Retain the initiative. Go to stash here. And make a treasure token. Then I'll, I'll just play land. And I'll pass the turn on my top card's Moloch now. But he's got Sheldock up, and he just preordained and drew a bunch of cards. Yeah, I'm like super dead here. I can't really imagine. Yeah, all right. I don't think there's any any real possibility of me winning. Uh, this is just going to be a hard matchup. I need to draw from the Catacombs or... Yeah, mostly that, I guess. That's going to be one of my better cards. I don't really want Regisaur. Don't think I want Pick Your Poison either. I think we are good. All right, I'm on the play here. Let's see if we can if we can go fast, fast and furious, because it's going to be tough. Oh, I mean, I will keep this hand. Burden plus Ren and Six is pretty nice. I get to open on Zeator's Proving Ground, and then turn two Forest, get back, play Ren and Six. If if Dustin has Force and Negation here, it's going to be a problem. But playing against a deck that's got Ancestral Mox Lutri deck. It's just going to be a good deck. All right, Proving Ground in. And I also would like to draw a little bit of action here because now I'll have infinite lands, assuming this were resolves. It might not. If it doesn't, then it doesn't. And it's not the end of the world, but obviously if he has a counter here, it's pretty rough. Okay, he had the days. Well, all right. Well, if I draw like a Graveyard Trespasser or... Undermount Adventure, that would all be good. I guess I will Thoughtseize here. He doesn't have Ancestral in hand, clearly. Or at least didn't last turn. Unless he's thinking of whether Ancestral... He didn't want to discard because he was going to daze. Yeah, that's a good reason to Ancestral. Or to not Ancestral, rather. Well, either way, I'm going to cast Thoughtseize here and see what's up. Hopefully I can I get a chance to Moloch something. Force of Negation, Pitch, and Counterspell. Wow. Okay, that's that's kind of good news because I got a two for one. Obviously, he's like protecting something, but I don't really know what that is. Um, it's just not pay the life. I don't think. I don't know. Maybe it, maybe I would want to cast Terra Sunder there. A forensic gadget here. Okay, that gives me something to Moloch. I kind of love that. Buy you. And the days is already gone, so I can just Moloch for the maximum. All right. Well, why did we force a negation there? That's interesting. Interesting. I guess if Dustin didn't have double blue, wasn't going to be able to cast either of those cards anyway, and it would, could stop me from taking something good here. All right. We just picked up a little two for one. That's fine. All right. Nissa. Nope. And this is part of the problem with Jund, right? Like... He, ki he countered my Red and Six and killed my Moloch, and now I'm on three removal spells, which 
isn't a very good way to fight against a Lutri companion. <laughs> Tell you that much. Pentad Prism for two. Shua. Into Thopter Foundry. Okay. Um, I'll just get the Thopter Foundry here. He can sack it if he wants by using a Pentad Prism counter and get a 1 1, which is not unreasonable. All right. You basically trade a counter for a 1 1. And his thing's not exiled if he cares about that. All right. Seder Wayfinder. All right. Let's mill. If I can mill, mill from the catacombs, that would be so sick. <laughs> How about instead I mill four spells? Well, only two of them are actual spells. All right. I didn't really need the land, but it's just adding insult to injury that I didn't hit one. <laughs> and need to find some action, I guess. I'm not feeling great about this. And if he runs out of stuff, he's going to put Lutri into hand, which he hasn't done yet. One card in hand, chose not to put Lutri into hand. All right, another land. Let's attack. Play the land and pass. I don't really think I need to slow roll it. Oh, Sheldock. That was a good draw. Wasteland would have been a nice one to pick up off the Seder Wayfinder. What if... Uh, all right, what if I draw from the Catacombs and I can get back Hwatli? That would be a pretty nice play here. He might not be getting Lutri because he has nothing to play with Lutri and just doesn't want to get it discarded. Okay. I'm just not going to crack that, I don't think. No real reason to. I do like Wayfinder missing and then drawing two lands. That's that's a nice combination. But maybe it's just justice for beating Jabro's much better deck. I mean, this deck is just Jun mediums. Like This matchup against Dustin is really bad. All right. Uh, I'm not even going to show my hand. I'm going to cast this. This at least gets a cycler, which I will cycle now. Okay. Glissa, hey, you know, that that's a spell. Uh, let's just wait here. He's got... Sheldock Isle. I assume it's not great for me, whatever's happening. Petty Theft on the Glissa. Okay, well, he's not using Sheldock right now, which is interesting. It's been active for a few turns. Okay, I guess I'll take four. I don't really want to snuff out the Brazen Borrower. I, I mean, I might at some point, but I kind of feel like that's not... Really what I want to do. All right. I'll send with the Wayfinder. And I'll play Glissa here since he knows about that one. Okay, and then I'm going to Pest Infestation. Oh, wait, hold on. Thopter and Grim Monolith. And I'll see if this works. Blow up the Thopter, blow up the Grim Monolith, make four one ones. Okay. Okay, is did he miss on Sheldock and has nothing to Lutri? Is that just what's going on here? Oh, he's playing a Mox. I don't really know what's what's up with this. Is this balance or something? No, Lutri's in hand. Oust. Oh, I see. He drew the oust. Um. He can force me to draw the Seder Wayfinder first. Justin's got Justin's has got no cards in hand. I guess now I'll snuff out the Brazen Borrower. Oh, he's just gonna oust one of the tokens. All right, and then gain three, gain three, and then now second from the top is Glissa. So. If I want, I can sack Wooded Foothills to not draw it. But I guess Gliss is fine to draw here. It doesn't seem it seems better than my average card. Better than a whole hand. Alright. Any catacombs? That's close. Alright, well, I guess I'm shuffling the Glissa. Underman Adventure. I guess I'm just operating under the assumption that he just bricked on the uh 
Sheldock Isle? I don't know. I could kill Lutri and attack for four, but it doesn't seem necessary, especially since if he plays a flyer, I'll be really happy to have a bitter triumph or like a big Teferi or something. I don't know. Just doesn't seem like it really makes sense. And are we really going to just go card for card here? I guess Pest Infestation was kind of a two for one. Um... All my other cards are just one for ones. I guess I too got a two for one off Thoughtseize because he pitched force counterspell to force of negation. And then the shell dock missed, so it's just like a land. All right. I mean, we'll, we'll have to see, but it actually looks like we're doing okay here. I've got the initiative and four creatures to his Lutri and just one card in hand. I mean, I do have to worry about what's in that shell dock, but there's been spells on the stack. There's been a lot of stuff going on that I would have assumed he would have cast if it was like anything. But maybe it's Sword of the Meek. Hmm. All right, that's going to be my official guess. Oh, it's Palace Jailer. He just didn't have a time he wanted to cast it. Okay. That's very strange. Interesting. So, uh, what's he going to do next turn? I mean, I can attack with everything here. Let's see. Is it 18? I'm just going to scry two, I think. Before I do anything. I'm going to go to the Lost Well. I'm going to scry for two. Oh, bottom. Bottom. All right. Sylvan Library. Um, let's cast Sylvan Library, see if it resolves. <laughs> and go to my attack. And I think I attack with these. And I'm likely going to cast Bitter Triumph here. But I guess I don't really need to right now. I'll just draw the card from Monarch. Oh, he had Path. Okay. That's pretty good. All right. I'll go get another Forest. I think I'll just let these die. I become the Monarch. I, and then... The reason I'm just waiting here is because I want to, first of all, see what I draw, but more importantly, he might not attack with both creatures. All right, I'm still going to let that happen because I really would like, oh, let's, I'm kind of curious, two top, lovely. <laughs> Time warp. Uh, okay. Yeah. I guess I'll just kill the Lutri now, discarding Dark Ritual. I could have had one tapped creature in play by casting it earlier, but it didn't really seem like a very good play to do that. Because I really would rather him... He might... Like, obviously he had the Time Warp. Oh, uh, sure. Okay, whatever. Look... This, this matchup seems horrible for me. For a second, I thought I was doing okay, but then he just had it all anyway. I was hoping maybe he only attacks with one creature, but obviously with the time warp, there's no reason not to attack with both. And then... Wow, Destin's deck is the nuts. This, is, this deck's crazy good. My deck is just okay. It's, I don't think it's great. If I, take, if I get a 2-1, I'll be thrilled. And... Currently, I mean, I have to imagine I'm dead here. I don't. This is Othari. Sure. And I'm taking nine. Oh no, I guess I'm just taking five here. Let's see. Uh, I mean, sure. I'll, I have from the catacombs in in my deck. There's a chance that if I if I draw from the catacombs and some other nonsense. I could end up do it being okay, but I mean, obviously, I don't really think that's likely to occur. Fairy Time Raveler. 
bounce my token. All right. And then let's just draw even as a colonnade too. Why not? Sylvan into Nyssa. But that's it. All right. One and one here. Let's get on to the last round. All right. Let's take a look at my teammates' decks real quick. This is Will with... Mox, Fast Bond, Exploration, Draw 7s, Flash, Time Twister. Definitely some cool stuff going on here. Strider on a very like consistent streamlined red black, all removal. <laughs> you know, no, no, this is red black mid. This is like Blood Crypt, Arid Mesa, Oliphant with Fury, Ragavan, Fire Covenant. Like this deck's awesome. Uh, Bowmasters and everything. And then, uh, Falcon Eyes got the Time Walk, which he got passed to by Charles, who took a Mox late in pack three. Charles is red, white aggro. Time Walk, Underworld Breach, Brain Freeze, Pyrokinesis, Unholy Heat, bunch of good spells. Deck's pretty sweet, too. Playing against Charles on Boros here. I'm going to keep this hand. Snuff Out would, would be my number one card to draw, but I think this is going to work out nicely. I play a turn one Halfling. Turn two, I can go... Utopia Sprawl plus Infernal Grasp into a turn three Undermount Adventure. I mean, that's that's the Jund way. Intrepid Adversary, sure. Okay, draw. Oh, Sylvan Library. Interesting. Um, I guess I'll save the fetch. Utopia Sprawl, the Overgrown Tomb, make red. And I think I'm just going to pass here. The reason I'm passing is because I'm fine blocking, and if I want to play Undermount Adventure next turn, which I do, I want to be able to bitter or Infernal Grasp whatever Charles plays this turn. All right, hopefully this isn't a Samwise here. That would be kind of annoying. Elite Spellbinder. Oh, yeah, that's pretty annoying. It's going to delay my uh, Undermountain quite a bit here. Well, I got my backup plan. I guess it's just play Sylvan Library. Dark Ritual would be a sick draw. Oh, Snuff Out, also a sick draw. Let's go Sylvan. Let's just play the Swamp, because I want to save Wooded Foothills for post-Sylvaning here. Here, oh, perfect, because I can just snuff that thing out. Or, or tear asunder it, I guess. Uh, or bitter triumph it. Let's put on top, put on top, land, cast with kicker on that. I think I'm just going to do that now. Um, mm, cast with kicker. Boom. And I'm just going to crack the wooded foothills. I could have paid four life to put a land in the hand for Undermount Adventure, but I don't really think that that's that exciting. Let's just get the Zeator's Proving Ground here. Sylvan. Ooh, Renin 6? Yeah, so let's put on top. Pay for life. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna pay a million life here. Just ignore me. Oh, take your mox ruby. And then Renin 6. Ping the selfless spirit. And now I've kind of got the game locked in. Like, obviously there's things Charles could draw here that would get him out of it, but. Wow, Lion Sash was actually a really good one because it gets my wooded foothills. Hmm. All right, fair enough, fair enough. Um, I can just land grant. I don't really care too much about... Well, let's just draw here. Get to Sylvan. Yeah, let's put, put Forest on top. Put Bobble on top. Cast land grant by revealing my hand. Just get forest, play it, play the Undermount Adventure, and I guess I'm just gonna snuff out now. He has like reprieve in his deck too. Okay, and it doesn't matter too much which land I get. I guess I'll get a mountain, and I'll pay for life, and I'll get the lion sash. What he actually should do is eat his own creatures because I have uh, from the catacombs. But all right, plus Ren and six, 
past the turn. So it's slightly less good than when he drew Lion Sash, but still, we're in pretty awesome shape here. Yeah. On top. I'm going right to the forge here because I have Sylvan already. That should give me some good, some good lands. All right. Put on top. Put on top. I'm not paying more life here. I'm going to play the Tarmogoyf. Plus one to Renin six. Send for five here. And then next turn, I mean, oh, actually, I should have pinged with Renin six because next turn's actually lethal. Oh. Stoneforge Mystic. Okay. Batter Skull. Oh, that's fine. Can beat a Batter Skull here. So let's go trap. And then hopefully we can Sylvan into something decent here. Um, I guess I'll just put these on top. But getting getting my wooded foothills exiled was really annoying. All right, land. And I guess I attack with both of these. Just taking 10. All right. I'll nug Tuxedo Rose for one. All right, he's got to draw something to get this Underman Adventurer off the off the battlefield. Otherwise, the Batter Skull just has to chump attack. And I guess to gain some life. Okay, goes to five. And now he can return it and replay it. I was just going to equip it here. Okay. And play a Giver of Runes. Sure. Now I get to go to the Undercity and draw a card. So now I should have a decent chance of finding a little bit of action. Oh, <laughs> or not. Mm. Let's see. It's a 5-6. So if I attack with both, you can double block. So I think I just attack with one. And that'll be under mountain as a 6-7, thanks to the initiative, or sorry, the exalted. And then I will pop one of his lands with Wasteland, because I'm getting it back with Ren and 6. And then next turn I get to go to Throne of the Dead 3. And he doesn't really have a, cha a choice here. He's got a he's got a block with one of the two. All right, jumping with the giver. That's fair. Wasteland, the Sacred Foundry, and I'll just get the Wasteland back. Because at this point, I just needed to ping to make it so it was lethal, this attack. Though I guess it would have been lethal either way. And then now, Throne of the Dead 3 should see me home here. We'll see. <laughs> we will see. If this was a Cauldra Complete, it would have been a lot harder. I'll tell you that much. All right. Upkeep. What do we got? Graveyard Trespasser or Deathrite Shaman? Yeah, we'll do Graveyard Trespasser. We'll Graveyard Trespasser, the Lion Sash. Turnabout's fair play, after all. Nissa, I mean, this, I would imagine, is enough. All right. Put on top. Put on top. I'm not going to... Oh, actually... Oh, Batter Skull. Huh. All right, let's target Batter Skull and Utopia Sprawl. Because they can return and play Batter Skull, which is funny. Uh, I, I want to use the Wasteland, actually, so let's go Wasteland, the Inspiring Vantage. I think kind of no matter how I run this, it's going to be fine. Okay. Blow up Utopia Sprawl and Batter Skull. You get to return Batter Skull. <laughs> I still, I targeted Utopia Sprawl because I still want to get my tokens. And then attack with both. Charles puts Batter Skull into play. Blocks. Takes one. Okay, I'm going to get back Wasteland, I guess. And 
past the turn. <laughs> Have I finally gotten it there? I mean, this batter skull has like delayed the inevitable by quite some time, but barring like a parallax wave or something, and even that, I don't know that that would solve things. So I feel like, I don't know, I feel like we're we're getting past the point of no return. He's fight, fighting valiantly, but Jund is doing its Jund things. All right, up a game here. Playing against White Weenie. Do I want pick your poison? can sack a flyer flyer and artifact is a pretty nice range gix's command also looks kind of nice i don't absolutely love thought seize, but i probably should keep it Seder wayfinder just seems okay also mm, i like red and six well enough i guess i could cut death right shaman Maybe. No, that card's pretty good. And I think I want Dark Ritual still. I guess Seder Wayfinder is one of my weaker cards. I, I just have to cut it on that merits. And I kind of want to cut Bitter Triumph. I already have Snuff out. I'm putting in Gix's Command. I have uh, Infernal Grasp as well. It's just pretty costly to play that card. I feel like I can do better. All right. Graveyard Trespasser is another card, which is just like okay. So maybe that's another one I can consider. Oh, I like this hand. This is a turn two Glissa. And it's also got some other really good cheap stuff. All right, so let's go Topia Sprawl. I'll name Green, I guess. I'm probably going to go turn two Glissa, turn three Moloch, but it'll really depend. Hmm. Is this turn two Spellbinder? No, Steel Seraph? Oh, we're going to... We're going to be pest infestationing shortly here. But what do I play first? Eh, I actually think it's probably just pest infestation, though. If I wait a turn, I can get everything. Well, that's not true. Because if I, if I nature of lore and wait a turn, I can get everything. But I kind of feel like I should just take out the Steel Seraph now. Because I, I have such a good hand here. Let's just blow up that. It basically stops the entire offense here. And then next turn, I can go Nature's Lore plus Glissa into a big Moloch or something along those lines. Wow. Pest Infestation is kind of the nuts. Shocker. Uh, Yeah, so let's go Nature's Lore. Get Bayou land. Play Glissa. And then next turn... Moloch, eat the giver of runes, and then Glissa can make, can't really attack yet, but we'll, we'll get close to it. Lion Sash goes up one. Yeah, the Pest Infestation wouldn't even have worked unless I had gone just Nature's Lore that last turn. But it seems so bad, because they would have played Giver and I would have kind of forced my hand. Though I guess I could have maybe moloch the Giver, but then I'm just taking damage off the... Steal Seraph every turn. No real reason to do that. So I guess you, Charles could attack with... Oh, attacking with Lion Sash. Huh. So if I block with Glissa, I'm just going to take it. I don't know what's going on here, but I kind of feel like I'm getting tricked. Is he going to cycle Eagles or something and then exile it? That seems like it'd be foolish to walk into. Mm. Do I want to cycle? I, I think I would be fine cycling the Jetmere's Garden, so I think I'm just going to get a forest here and just play a Moloch X equals 4. Eat the Giver of Runes. Can protect Usher. Oh, get lost on the Moloch. Okay. Sure. Yeah, I guess I can't attack now. And now the Lion Sash is a lot bigger. All right, this is a little annoying. Lion Sash about to be a 4-4. Wait, so what was the block there? If I just blocked Gliss on Lion Sash, was there just no play? Was it just use Giver of Runes? Huh. Odd. Okay. Uh... 
I'll block the pest token. I feel like with a giver out, I want to preserve my life total a little bit here. Oh, oh, what a good draw. All right, all right. I need to draw something now. That's close. It just eats the Mox Ruby now, which is unfortunate. Let's start by going... This is a green, so yeah, let's go map token on Glissa here. From the Catacombs. Oh, I can't put it in my graveyard because of the Lion Sash. Except, or, except the Lion Sash just hoses it anyway, so I think I do just put it in my graveyard. It's not doing anything. Then I'll use this on Glissa, get Urborg, sure. Mm. Wow, I, I'm losing this game. The the get lost to save the mother, or the, the giver of runes, ended up being just a huge beating. All right. And I can't really attack. I don't even think I want to play pick your poison here. I think I'm just going to pass the turn. Yeah, from the catacombs gets eaten. I have a decent... I mean, Glissa is a decent blocker overall. But if I can find a way to kill that Mox Ruby, then I can kill the Lion Sash with Pick Your Poison. Though I guess Batter Skull also can eat that. And maybe I want to save Pick Your Poison to kill a Flyer or something. At least Graveyard Trespasser is going to flip. That's not bad. Okay. Usher of the Fallen. And I'll block with the Pest again. Okay, make a token. All right, need to draw something. The way this has game turned out, saving the Pest Infestation might have been better, but I don't know. It, it felt like an undue risk. All right, well, I don't mind Sylvan Library. Let's cycle. I know this grows the stupid... Lion Sash, but what are you going to do? Play Sylvan, pass the turn, Batter Skull comes in. And then I'm just going to take a huge hit next turn. And game three, wow, this Picker Poison is looking so much worse than Bitter Triumph. I guess I'm probably just going to switch those back out. I'll take nine. Not really doing much else. And then if I draw Gix's command, that could definitely be something. Okay. Well, Infernal Grasp helps, sure. It's a start. Obviously, I'm at a low enough life total now that <laughs> it gets a lot worse, but what did Foothills and Land Grant? All right. Mm. Infernal Grasp, the Mother Runes go to five. All right. I mean, I guess I will. Yeah, I'm not going to do anything here. And then... Oh, actually, I don't really want to flip gra gra Graveyard Glutton, so... Let's just pass here. Why? I mean, first strike death touch is a pretty good defensive measure. So maybe oh, containment priest. Uh, I guess I go to zero if I block the two big things. Well, uh, maybe maybe Charles won't attack with everything. Oh, he just has another spell. No, he's moving there. I go to negative one. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. All right. Going to game three here. I don't know that pick your poison being bitter triumph would have been enough in this particular instance, but I think I probably will make that swap here uh, and hope that being on the play gives me some time to use pest infestation. Dark ritual would be a nice one with pest infestation too. Uh, yeah, I will keep this hand. This hand's great. Turn one death right for Bayou. 
Oh, wait. I meant to just... I thought I was getting a try line for a second. I meant to death right shaman. Yeah, all right. It's fine here because I didn't really want to use death right on turn two to, to cast something, but obviously I did mean to play death right turn one there. All right. Lion Sash is once again the card I don't really want to see. <laughs> uh, figure of Destiny. Okay. And once again, I would really like to see a uh, pest infestation. I'll pass the turn here. Can pump up the jam on figure. I'm probably just going to take two. And then end of turn, I'm going to tear asunder the Esper Sentinel and pay the, pay the cost so I don't get hosed here. Stoneforge Mystic, okay. Mm. Doing batter skull or lion sash? It's actually kind of interesting. Uh, actually, I think I'm actually gonna ignore the Esper Sentinel. I'm afraid because at this point I can just pay the pay the cost to to kill the things. Okay, delighted halfling. Land, go. And I guess I'll just use the Death Rite Shaman. I need something with a little bit of meat on it, but I'm not feeling too bad about this current situation. Okay. Selfless Spirit. Okay, well, at least that Terra Sunder gets around that nicely. Um, do I want to use Death Rite? I kind of don't. Because I have from the catacombs. You can't put in... Though I don't think I'm going to from the catacombs the figure of destiny anyway. Okay. Oh, Tarmogoyf is not terrible. And... I'll pass the turn here. And then end of turn... I assume he's going to put in the Lion Sash, and I'm going to get to tear asunder it. I'm hoping it's a Lion Sash, not a Batter Skull. All right. And this gets to exile it. And then I'll pay the one for Esper Sentinel. Mm -hmm. And then, all right. Now that that's gone from the Catacombs gets significantly better. I just need to draw Ren and Six to get that uh, Selfless Spirit into the graveyard. Or Snuff Out. Ugh. Well, Snuff Out gets countered by Selfless Spirit. Okay. <laughs> they even get to explore off the spirit attacking because it's a cleric, which is funny. Oh, that does not do much for me. Oh yeah, yeah. Um. I guess I'll cast land grant. Pay the one. <laughs> Gonna buy you. Play by you, pass the turn, and really need to find a removal spell. I think I'm just dead to Selfless Spirit plus Seasoned Engineer because I don't have a way to kill the Seasoned Engineer fast enough now that there's a Selfless Spirit in play. Not that I have a single way to do it anyway, but hopefully, hopefully what happens is the Seasoned Engineer explores like a solitude into the graveyard. <laughs> That would be pretty sick. No, nope, hits lands again. Guess I'll block the human token and take seven down to eight, and then next turn get trapped. Yeah. Um, all right, I'm not going to worry about flashing back from the catacombs at this point. <laughs> Don't think that's going to happen. There's my snuff out, but I go to four. I snuff out the selfless spirit. I from the catacombs it back. Here, let's just snuff out the seasoned engineer and get hit by selfless spirit and then concede. Well, we tried Junding, it did not succeed. And uh, I think this deck was okay, but it was nothing special. This deck was good. Uh, so it this combination is just 
you're not getting that much of an advantage. You're just casting your cards. They don't work like the 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 best this does is it has ramp into high impact cards. And you know what? I don't think that last matchup was terrible for me. Like I think a timely pest infestation or Moloch can really turn the tide there. It just the cards lined up kind of poorly game two, and then game three didn't really get there. So that'll do it for today. As always, I appreciate you watching through the thick and the thin. And even if classic Jun doesn't do the trick, you know, maybe the next draft will. I'll be back tomorrow with another draft, and I hope to see you there. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. It helps out the channel, and you won't miss a single draft.